Hi everyone, this is ACDC, Araceli and Colette, The Dynamic Change. And my name is Araceli, I'm a Transition Wealth Advisor, and I love helping single professional women to rearrange their finances so they can get ahead of the game, pay the debt quicker and retire faster. And I'm here with my co-host, uh, Colette. Colette, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Colette Rabba, and I am a real estate broker in the GTA. I prefer GTA West, but I will help anybody uh, East, West, North, South, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, but mostly I'm in Mississauga, and I like to work in the surrounding area. And uh, I take on clients, residential clients. If you want to just talk, we're, that's why we do the show. So we can answer your questions before you buy anything because yeah. it's so important to keep you safe when you purchase. And we are doing a show, our part two on home sharing and what yeah. we are going to talk about today might interest you. So, mm -hmm. so now before we get to, uh, there, I'm gonna put a link uh, for the part one if you didn't uh, see it so you can, compare the two of them so the difference between the two of them okay good idea all right yeah aerosol is the techie one out of the two of us <laughs> i so. try <laughs> yeah yeah so we call it we call this one um golden girl style because yeah. that's really the most uh the the way most people understand it and um and and if you don't know the show golden girls was about i think four women so poor women, uh, I think so. <laughs> and what they did is they all lived together because they were older and they were all single and they felt like they didn't want to be lonely. They, they really wanted to live together because they liked each other. So ultimately that's the scenario. And women, uh, Araceli and I were talking a little bit before, women tend to outlive men. So even if you're married, uh, this might be <laughs> an option for you instead of like moving in with your kids because some people either don't have kids or don't want to live with their kids. Yeah. Sorry, kids, I love you, but uh, you know, I, I, I <laughs> don't tell anybody, don't tell yeah, them. And this is, <laughs> even though we call it golden girls, this can be also for men, right? So, and, and younger women too, yeah. and younger people, because this is the thing, as we all know, Residential real estate in the GTA is a little bit crazy. Oh my goodness, yes. So to be able to afford a million dollar property and you have four people instead of one, I mean, that makes a huge difference financially and you get to grow your wealth at the same time. Exactly. So you're absolutely right. It's not just for older ladies, even though like, you know, we're, we're writing as the demographic ourselves. <laughs> yeah, but it is for anybody that is... Uh, kind of don't want to spend all their money in their home. Um, right now, you know, I'm uh, talking to clients and sadly we are between 50 to 60% of the incoming money just towards housing. Right. Which right. is the roof over your head to support, you know, with all the utilities and property taxes plus your mortgage. And this is insane because you know what? We've always been taught at least as a financial planning uh, it's to do no more than 30% of your money, your net income coming in. Right. And, and that is just not the case, which is putting a lot of pressure on people uh, for other things that we need to buy, right? Like we need to right. Well, of course. Do. Yeah, of course. And, and that's the thing, like when you really, I, I just realized that I'm wearing this, I had a other shirt that I was gonna wear and it's on the floor. <laughs> so oh no. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Uh, you guys don't know that. I'm wearing a shirt. I'm not naked. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's the thing. Like when you really think about um, the, 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 not just how expensive it is to live, but the quality of living and exactly. we all would love, you know, both of us have these beautiful backgrounds behind us of these gorgeous homes. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we strive for, but it doesn't mean that we all live like this. So to really think the quality of living as well and to not feel house poor. You buy this amazing million dollar property or whatever the price is, and it needs full renovations and how do you do it? How can you afford it? So even if you don't have kids, but you want to live in a nicer home, how do you pay for stuff like that? So 
that's a whole other segment. Yeah. But so we're excited to share this with you. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. If you're all ready. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, so can you see that? I hope you yes. Can. Let me open it all up. Okay, so this is the the part two, Golden Girl style, of what is home sharing. So, for lack of a better term, we want to call it home sharing because really, this is what it is. We're we're sharing one home with several people. So, and and if you don't know the law, there are people to protect you and to protect all the parties. So generally speaking, what is it? Home sharing is when you purchase together. Mm -hmm. There might be a better term, uh, but let's just call it, you know, because we're calling it home sharing. Correct. Yeah, we remember the episode one, we talked about also home sharing when somebody's actually just coming to trade in uh, some of the, the, the um, activities that are in the house, especially will work well with somebody that is older and somebody that is younger, just to starting. But right. this one is different. You're actually purchasing the property together. Right, right. Well, and like, this is the other thing too. It, you, you technically could lease a property altogether, but that's a real personal thing. And if you can find a, the, the problem with renting a home altogether is that the landlord will be asking for very specific things. And as we all know, if they decide to sell the house, you're all out. So as a, in this case, if they're all seniors, you want to have a little bit more confidence in the actual property that it's not going to be pulled out from under you. So Correct. And you'd like, be able to do some modifications as well as exactly. needed. Yeah, so that's why we are talking about purchasing a property together. So, as you know, as you may know, maybe you don't. Uh, this is a photo of the show Golden Girls, which was, I believe, in the eighties. Was it eighties? I don't know. Eighties. <laughs> yeah. I think. Anyway, so it was a really interesting concept, and it was such a wonderful show too because it really showed the life of senior women that we've never seen before on TV. So that's. Uh, so it was quite interesting to see what they what their thoughts were and their feelings and how they interacted with one another it was very funny uh and many people still watch it today and, and quote it <laughs> so and if you don't know their names the act the, not just the actresses the the uh, characters uh it's blanche rose dorothy and sophia so we think they got it right because it's very interesting when you look back uh on the concept of it all so the buyers so we thought it was very important that we put this kind of uh, legal thing in the presentation because there are two ways to buy a house generally speaking mm -hmm. there's a joint tenant so you, usually this is a husband and wife situation where one of the co-owner dies and the other person just automatically inherits what what is left like the house and, and whatever property mm -hmm. um, but tenants in common each own a defined share. So if you co-own and somebody dies, then the interest passes according to their will or the rules of um, yeah. your, your estate. Yeah, your succession plan. So, um, so this is why we like to call it with buyers, you know, to, to actually go through the process of saying, you're gonna buy this property together because the first and foremost, talk to Araceli, you have to discuss your financing before you purchase, how much you can all afford, what kind of properties need to be sold in order to do this thing, to collectively mm -hmm. uh, pool your money and to buy something, but do it before purchasing. And you have to all figure it out. Once Araceli tells you this, 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 mm -hmm. then you find a mortgage broker or a lender, and possibly you might have to sell your property that you already own. Let's say yep. you and I you know, move in together, we do this then we both have properties. Do we want to sell our properties to buy a collective? Uh, yeah, you know, joint? So all of this is super important because sometimes it doesn't make sense to sell your current property. If you do have a lot of equity or it's completely paid for, it might be better uh, to have a renter right. to help you out with some cash flow coming into you, right? Of course, yeah, of course. Now, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention here, call it on the joint tenants. This is, as you said, is for normally for a married couple, but also right now it is for single children. 
So if you are buying a property with one of your children because they are single, they don't want to get married, or they are not at the stage that they're with somebody, you have another space, yeah. You buy the house together. And this is also allows you to do a little bit of estate planning at the same time. Because right. if you're going to leave the house, especially if you have only one child, right? If you're going to leave the house directly to that uh, child, then it's an easier way to just, when you pass, then the house will be in the name automatically. Right. But also, and, and we're talking about tenants in common, not joint tenants, because tenants in common, let's say my child wants to buy. And, you know, we like to talk that way. I actually yeah. have a client that just phoned me recently to say, how do I do this? So uh, they wanted the security of being on title. Mm -hmm. So that child couldn't say, oh, you know, I just want to go and, and, you know, move to Africa and sell. And if that uh, your the parent says this is crazy. I know how you are. You're going to come back in a year, and then we've lost out on this property. So uh, that's one scenario. But also to say, as a parent, I want to protect the child, and I still want to be on title, even if it's just one percent. Mm -hmm. And you get ninety nine percent. You can do that. So this mm -hmm. is something that this is highly legal, and you have to talk to a lawyer and the mortgage broker or, or lender before you do this. So mm -hmm. you understand the implications of what it means if, you know, how much of a, the mortgage am I responsible for? 1% or 100%? So all these things we're not going to get into, mm -hmm. but, and also the life insurance coverage. So that's right. So that's in, in this with. case, um, in most cases as a joint tenants, uh, both of them will have, and make sure that you do have your own individual insurance because the usually the um, insurance provided by the lender, it is defined as for the balance of the, the mortgage and not for you. So this is very important to have your own private insurance. If you don't know the difference, send me a message and I'll tell you what the difference is. But normally you will wanna cover the amount of the mortgage. So if you take $500,000, you will be protected for 500,000 that it allows to pay for the entire property if something will happen to you. Mm -hmm. Now, as tenants in commons, you can do something similar, right? That's saying if you know one of you dies, I have coverage that will pay for the remaining of the mortgage. You can also have only your share. And at that time, uh, you will decide either to add that to the existing mortgage or to sell the property and then just give the shares of the remaining parties in, in place, right? Right, yeah. So that's, we just want to put it out there that it, to understand this. So if you go to a lawyer and say, okay, well, how are we going to do this? You understand the concept and the difference between joint tenant and tenants in common. Um, and of course, you know, you, you discussed financing before purchasing, but also um, everything should be split after the purchase, like utilities mm -hmm. and taxes because you're all sharing the space equally in in my opinion if you say oh i'm going to park in the parking in the garage and you aren't so maybe that person wants to pay a little bit more but that can all be worked out exactly yeah. exactly and then what's in it for them why should we even do something like this i'll just live alone for the rest of my life but it's it's very hard like you want to age in place you want to you know there are studies shown that um you you age better mentally and physically when you have other people surrounding you mm -hmm. um and of course the increased safety if somebody falls somebody is there to hear it <laughs> yeah exactly so, and then you also get help with what we were talking about earlier you know what do you like to do what do i like to do and and let's see uh you know the chores that we each like that would be ideal yes you know, find the right mix of people that you know if um you like cooking and I don't like cooking. I don't like cooking, so it's not going to work. <laughs> well, that's bad. <laughs> but, you know, like, that's the thing. I'm just saying, in theory, I'm yeah. good at ordering takeout. Exactly. But if, I mean, this is very shopping. important, right? Because uh, cooking, for me, it's, it's a big chore. I do it because I have to. But if I had somebody to cook, I'd be happy cleaning everything, right? Well, yeah, I think I'm not, I, I don't, when it comes to cooking, I really, I'm not picky. I'll eat whatever somebody else yeah. makes for me, but I don't think I'm a very good cook. So maybe that's what it is. If I felt a little more confident in my cooking ability. <laughs> yeah, and it also depends on this, 
you also have to think about the schedules, right? Yes. Because you may not be, some people will work maybe shifts uh, or they are out of the country. I, I don't know, right? Yeah, uh, so also, so the restrictions, right? Like it maybe one of them is vegetarian, the other right. one is not. So, right. Well, and the nice thing too is like when, if you do have family members and people worry about seniors when they're alone, mm -hmm. right? So imagine, you know, when I look at my family, let's say, um, you know, my aunt and uncle and my uncle passes away. I worry about my aunt. She's by herself. You yeah. know, she might not have kids or she might have kids that check in on her. Maybe her kids live far away. So things like that. If you put yourself in that position where you're like, okay, I don't want my family members. You know, you have parents that are far away. You can't far, yeah. pop in and check on them. So like, this is something we have to think about ourselves and whatever they do is up to them. Mm -hmm. um, but it does provide relief for your family members to know that you're with somebody. And you're not alone, right? Um, okay, so now going back. Oh, so this is actually the photo that I found online mm -hmm. of the actual house the Golden Girls show was based on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, and it's kind of funny that it's like sort of like this creamy pink color, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is in Miami. Nice. So, mm. you know. uh, yeah. So, anyway, so the legalities that you have to talk about just very, very you know, we're, we're being very fast with this. this is not anything, but if you recognize the things that you need in the clauses and in the agreements, it'll be easier for you uh, to imagine what this all, like the legalities of it all, which is um, you should always have an escape clause. Let's say we, we get into a big fight and uh, you know, we, one of us wants to move out. That should be an escape clause or, you know, uh, something to say, okay, well, we've tried to resolve the conflict that we have what do we do now right yeah exactly um, but remember that this will also affect your finances because let's say there's four people buying into it and then we'll decide four. that one of them doesn't work out for whatever reason or yeah. they didn't like it and they decide to move out the, the plans change and yeah. now you were planning to obviously contribute a quarter of it and now you have to contribute a third which or, may not be in your budget right or you have an, an escape clause in there to say we have the right to find another party to take over your correct yeah your, section your your portion of uh the agreement so that's the what if happens what what if shit happens <laughs> clause mm -hmm. that in the case of what if what if one of you falls and and you have a concussion and you can no longer uh you know not just work but you have medical bills now to pay mm -hmm. and um you know whatever it is let's say disability or or even death, what happens? Yeah. And, or if somebody doesn't pay, let's say I decide to go gambling or my boyfriend gambles all my money away and now I can't pay. So all these things is highly legal. You have to figure it out. You have to talk about it. Yeah. Um, knock on wood. I don't want anybody to like ever gamble my money away. <laughs> no. And the thing is, this is, you have to remember that this is a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. You know, even if let's say you're not romantically involved, but you still have to care for the other person, be responsible and, you know, be caring and knowing how to compromise a little bit. Right. Right. So. And mostly with friends, if somebody, let's say my friend breaks her leg, of course, I'm going to help her. I'm not going to just say, well, you know, Hey, let's mm -hmm. look at the, let's look at the agreement and it doesn't say in the, I have to do it. So yeah, obviously that's personality, right? Um, things that you agree upon, like what you were mentioning too, about what spaces are shared or which are private. Yeah guests coming over how long do they stay uh pets maybe one day somebody walks in with a dog and i'm like hey not yeah. or, a, or a new partner and say hey this guy wants to move in no like that all has to be in writing because if anybody knows anything about a legal document no matter verbal mm -hmm. legal document is the end that is and then you always have to go back to it um one of my sayings says, get divorced before you get married, right? Because you know what? When you are in good terms, you're really yeah. excited about buying this property. 
Now right. let's put the rules together and let's put them on paper so we don't forget because yeah. if we get mad at each other, then everything goes out the window and whatever right. we said when we were civil, now right. it no longer matters. I don't yeah, like so you almost, and whatever, right? So it's almost like a prenup. So let's get a prenup before exactly. we buy property. <laughs> in details too so the other the other thing too is create a timeline um to revisit the agreement if they're saying oh hey we didn't talk about pets let's add that in and we can do it at an anniversary or uh you know let's say we have like a like a shareholders meeting every couple months or something that you can add to the agreement so a lot of times people don't invent an agreement uh, off the top of their head they take it from somewhere else so if you look at a condo agreement, because that's very similar. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, uh, if you do belong to a condo, look at the, the agreement and- the Kind of like the rules that what you can and can't do sort of right, thing, right? Right, Yeah, exactly. So condo agreement loosely is something that you can get a lot of information and in how they structure it too, to make it sound legal before you even go to a lawyer. So you have an idea of what you're, mm -hmm. what you're after in, a, in an agreement. Uh, same thing with shared responsibilities, who takes care of what? You cook two nights, I'll cook one night. <laughs> then we need another person to do the rest. We need more. Yeah, two takeout nights. So how many days in the week? Okay, anyway. Yeah, and then and also like, like gardening and maybe fixing up some things. If, right. Especially if you're buying something that needs renovation. Let's say that there is three people, but there's only two bathrooms. You may, may want to add another one that everybody has their own bathroom, that would be a really nice sure. setup. Or everybody shares all the bathrooms. So that that's all something about the actual details of the house. Uh, maybe you're right, it needs a renovation, it needs an addition, things like that. Um, and you were even mentioning too, before we were on the air about, let's say if there was a basement and, and we wanna rent out the basement to yeah. a tenant separate so they can help us. And then how does that money go into a joint account yeah. and they they use it for utilities exactly. shared? or groceries or whatever, whatever the case may be. So Maybe if you have, things. Yeah, if you have more than three people doing this kind of agreement, it yep. would be a good idea to designate uh, somebody that will be able to take care of paying the bills, making right. sure because, you know, if it's your turn and then you're forgetful and then you don't pay, then that's not a good thing, right? So you right. have to have somebody that likes to take care of the books, Sure. So like the money, especially with things that don't are not even like, you know, you would know what your mortgage is, what, you know, like maybe the home insurance would be, but maybe hydro gas would be a little bit different every time, you know, depending on the season. And right. then you have to collect the money to make sure that it goes um, to well, get them paid, right? And there's always things that come up. Let, let's say a tree, part of the tree falls down, you know, who's mm -hmm. going to call somebody to take it away or to, 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 you know, help fix whatever damages it caused, like things like that. If you write a general clause in there to say, okay, you know, if there's for, 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 for property, uh, exterior maintenance, it's this person, interior maintenance, it's this person. Mm -hmm. If you have mice, you have to call an exterminator. You know, why do you want to argue about who's, you know, who's going to do it, but mm -hmm. it has to, you all have to feel equal, right? It only works if somebody is not pressured to say, I have all the responsibility and I have to do this and this and that. And then yeah. people are, 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 you know, nagging me to do this and that when, it, you know, I'm, I think I'm doing enough. So this is why we revisit the agreement every month and then to check up on each other to say, okay, how's it going with this? Uh, I noticed that you're having trouble um, with whatever it is, or yeah. there's there, maybe they're not aware there is a, a little shingle missing on the roof or something like that. <laughs> so, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, there, this is a thing that we all have. Yeah. To, it's just regular uh, maintenance, things that happen in a house and also preventative maintenance. So if you know that you're going to have to replace the roof in five years, are you putting together some money to, right get this expense done right so it's very similar to go back to the condo agreement because they have a maintenance plan in that and everybody has to pay x number of dollars a month mm -hmm. for maintenance if it's used or not used maybe at the end of the year you have a big party so yeah. fantastic whatever way you want to mm -hmm. slice it you know it has to be discussed and to really say how to resolve conflict i know living together is not easy sometimes you really have to calculate these things and maybe get 
you know, a counselor or, or an outside person to resolve conflicts, mm -hmm. to come in and say, you know what, I'm a neutral party. Let's talk about it and see. And instead of saying, oh, well, let's get the third person to come in and you decide who's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't want to do that. No. And I think that most people that would do this kind of agreement is because either you are related somehow, you know each other for a long time, you know how the other party is. Oh, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> It's you know, the same that picking who you're going to marry, right? right. And it may not be all good, but at the same time, things change, especially Actually, if, yeah, if you, you know, are going to maybe add, get into a relationship. I should add so, yeah. before, instead of how to resolve conflicts, uh, how do you fight? Because people fight differently. And if you don't understand the other person to say, oh, okay, you need like half an hour or half a day to go after I've said, hey, you know, can you do X, Y, Z? And that person freaks out. They need, they just need time to run away for a minute and mm -hmm. think, think the process through and then come back. So, you know, I'm not one for conflict resolution. I'm not an expert, <laughs> but I know how, especially with couples, yeah. how couples can, can react to one another when they say something. And it's like, okay, you don't have to answer me now. <laughs> Let's go back to our monthly meeting and yeah. we'll discuss it then or whatever it is, right? Yeah, and also, you know what? Even if you have been friends for a long time, it's not the same living together because there's little things that, you know, that you have, you have habits that you like to do. Maybe you just like to read at night and right. this person likes to listen to loud music. Right. And that might be a conflict. It, it's nothing wrong with it. But right. it might be a conflict because now you are sharing the space. Right. Okay. So we're getting to that. I think that's on my next page. So, you're, uh, so yes, you are right. Uh, so what, what the Golden Girls did right. I actually found this online. You can search it too if you want. Um, this is the, 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 the plan of their actual house, how they laid it out, I guess, in theory. I don't know if this is the actual house um, or just in theory what they're thinking. This is what mm -hmm. it would look like. So as you can see, I don't know if it's kind of hard for you to see, but there are two bedrooms, um, or sorry, three bedrooms on one side and they share one bathroom. And then on the other side, there's one bedroom. So I guess that's the master suite where there's mm -hmm. a walk-in closet and, and one bathroom separate. So this doesn't mean, you know, it has to be this way. It's whatever you decide how you want to live. Yeah, it also and, depends on, on how big the property is how easy it is to uh, uh, have additions of course um, and for, outdoor space. You know, all of it right P cars for you know if there's four of you or three of you and you have only two spot two garage spots or you know whatever it is who's driving what's going on um and and this is the thing so in general you've got to look at uh, close proximity to shops restaurants hospitals so we're talking about the older generations too but this is sort of applies to everybody yeah specifically a ranch or bungalow style home because everything is on one level mm -hmm. you're aging we all know that stairs are not great when you're aging you might have knee problems um open concept too with easy access to the outdoors or to other rooms so if you do share a space you're not running down a huge corridor to get to the bathroom it's yeah. right, you know in a smaller um, um uh, area and then private bedrooms you know people like to retreat to their private bedrooms and if they have a private bathroom space, that's great. But enough room for everyone to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, I don't know if you know the term universal design. So universal design is things like door handles, light switches, knobs, things that everybody can grip and everybody can use. And they're mm -hmm. they're not too high and they're not too low, and they're very easy for mobility. Like everything is on one floor like showers don't have a threshold, things like that. We really have to think about really, it's very important for the whole aging population and for kids too. There's a lot of time. Exactly. So you have to also remember, we, we really go in the sense that this is somebody that is going to be older, but not necessarily. Sometimes you do right. have, but you have to consider the age of the people that are in the house. If somebody's older, you need to go with those requirements obviously the younger person is not going to matter well, right? Like yeah, they, and in that case right i remember years ago when my parents were building their house they actually put a provision in to possibly renovate a closet to make it into a 
later on if they needed a small uh, lift or, or, or a, um, an elevator. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't remember the word elevator. Maybe I'm getting too old. I need an elevator. I don't know what it's called. But, you know, instead of those like chair lift things. Yes, yes. Said, okay, we're, we, we're going to make sure that the measurements of one of the closets fits the measurements that these elevator companies have for a single unit for somebody to go up and down. So they don't have to go up and down the stairs mm -hmm. if you have the money to do that. When if you buy a house that is two or three floors. Um, so questions to ask, just uh, really, you know, if you're thinking about this, these are things that you can put together now before you get to that point. You know, what's the contract look like? What are the guidelines? Should we have an interview process for each other? too. Mm -hmm. hey, these are the, my requirements. What are your requirements? Mm -hmm. And really talk about all this, even before you start looking for property. Absolutely. And, and even if you do know people, because obviously when you are yeah. going to get three, four people, everybody has their own requirements. Some want to have a larger garden, someone that have maybe space to do exercise because they do that at home uh, for cooking. Right. They want a bigger kitchen. Uh, so all of these things, they have to be in and obviously has to be done prior to the purchase and engaging uh, your realtor. So yeah. they can find that particular house. And if they cannot find it, uh, you, are you prepared to do the, the proper renovation or changes to the property to have those requirements? So that's very, very important. Yeah, and what you were mentioning before about hobbies, like, do you like to salsa dance at three o'clock in the morning? Maybe that's not going to work out for me, you know, <laughs> or me, you know, we also, both of us, we would get along really well because we both like to fix things up and do yeah. DIY stuff. So we could probably both agree that the garage is left for our hobbies and no yeah, parking exactly. park there. <laughs> so exactly. Very, very important. the third person won't agree to that. So these are all things you have to discuss. Uh, hours to do laundry even too. Like some people say, I'm working. I, you know, I, my, the laundry room is right by my office mm -hmm. and I would really like to make sure that nobody, sorry, my cat is on my lap. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's one of these weird days here. You can see him. He's crawling around. So there you go. The <laughs> professionalism of our show, of our little YouTube channel. This is <laughs> Yeah. There you go. He's going to contribute as well. You know, that's yeah. the big thing. If you don't want a pet, yes. what if you have, that you have to discuss? What if you have allergies? It's not that you don't like them, but you have allergies to yeah. it. It might not be possible, right? Absolutely, right. So, yeah, the, and lack of privacy too. So, that's what I was talking about laundry. And I'm in my office. Maybe I'm still working at whatever age. Uh, you, you as well. I don't think we have any interest in retiring anytime yeah. soon. So how do we work? Do we work in the public space, the private space? So there's exactly. a lot of things to talk about. And then obviously how the contract ends. Exactly. Um, and especially now that you know what we are uh, in the world, that is an online world, you may right. need to have a space just for somebody that is working at home if you're still right. working or if you want to create YouTube videos, uh, podcasts, anything like that that requires some kind of privacy. Okay right yeah is, yeah is that a space enough can you do it from your bedroom or sure. do you want to designate a location specifically for that uh, and then assign hours so people can share that uh, yes exactly that so it all can be worked out like this is the beauty of having i mean people have been living together for for forever really and it's not just natural you know your family um that you live with many people co uh share Homes yeah. and, and think about like um, uh, when you're in university, a lot of kids buy a house and they, or maybe they don't buy the house, the parent buys the house and then they get they share it and they still they have share. to coexist, right? There's always conflict. There's always going to be somebody that is, you know, leaving the socks on the floor, whatever crazy stuff happens, but it has to be conflict resolution. How do you get past all that without completely, you know, going head to head? So that's mm -hmm. a too. Uh, so that's it. That's all I got. Well, that's awesome. So just remember, if there's anything that we didn't discuss today, let us know and we will uh, talk about it in another episode or we can add to this one uh, any other questions, but please bring them to us because we're looking for more uh, content for the show and also to know what people are looking for. 
but remember yeah, if you're, you're interested to know more like we're a phone call away so i have my phone number right here you can easily find us online mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, Aracely that's Apple. right all of the, the links to our socials are yeah. in the uh, uh and the youtube channel please remember to subscribe we don't and, mind. <laughs> and yeah to like and it, yeah, send us a comment you like it you don't like it please yeah. let us know well, and the other thing too, I just want to say, like most people say, oh, it's a stupid question or, oh, you know, I should know this. There's no such no. a thing. Right. If you have that question, 500 other people have the question. Exactly. And so you're helping other people by asking us stuff so we can present it and really put out the good information that we want everybody to know. Yeah. So thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Thank you, Colette. Bye. Bye.